Okay, here we go. This uh, video is being recorded in front of a live studio audience, so hopefully they'll be a little bit more quiet this time. And you're also going to have a guest teacher in this video. So starting with number one. Um, now, we're going to try to graph a coordinate in three dimensions on a 2D piece of paper. So as you can imagine, that's a little bit challenging. Um, X-axis is actually the axis that's like jumping right off the paper, coming right towards your face. So that's what you have to imagine, that X-axis is actually coming out at you. So this is our X, Y, and Z. And now X is the one that jumps out in front, Y is left and right, and Z is up and down. So it's a little bit different than what you're used to. So to graph 2, 3, 4, what you do is you bounce out 2 along the x-axis, and then y is left and right, so 3 is 3 to the right because it's positive. And then finally 4 for z goes up 4 because that's where z is positive. And we have a coordinate right there, and we're good to go. So number 2, which you can try on your own, we have x, y, z. X is negative, so we're actually going to bounce backwards 5. So you're like behind your piece of paper now. And then we're going to bounce to the right 3 because Y is positive in the right direction. And then Z is going to go up 4. And you're going to put a big old dot right there. And then we can imagine where that dot is in real life. So now we are going to have a guest speaker for number 3. So for this one, 3 is X, negative 4 is Y and then negative 2 is z. So you'll start here. You'll go 1, 2, 3 down. And then you'll go 1, one 2, 3, 4 out because it's a negative. And then you'll go 1, 2 down because it's another negative. And then you'll put a dot. So that's graphing a coordinate. Now, like I said before, this is supposed to be like three dimensions, so it's kind of difficult to do that. Um, so here we go. Now we're going to move on to another topic. We are going to graph an actual XYZ equation, which would be in three space. So to do this, you're only, we're not going to put this in like Z equals negative X or whatever type of MX plus B type thing. We're only going to graph these using intercepts. So... The first thing you're going to do is say x is equal to 6. So that means x is 6. So you're going to come out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you're going to put a dot right on x equals 6. y, we have negative 2y is equal to 6. That means y is equal to a negative 3. So we're going to go where y is equal to negative 3. We're going to put another big old dot. And then finally, for z, we have 2z is equal to 6, so z is equal to 3. So we are going to go up 3 on the z-axis, and there you go. Now all you have to do is connect your dots, color it in, and you are done. That's how you graph a plane. Now, just so you know, this coordinate is 6, 0, 0. This coordinate right here is 0, negative 3, 0. And this last one is 0, 0, 3. Okay? So that's that. Now we're going to move on and we're going to talk about function notation. But now we're going to be doing it for a function of x and y. But you know what? You might be able to do this on your own. Basically, solve for z. Go ahead and pause it and try. So let's see if you got it right. First thing you need to do is get z on this side only. So you're going to have 2z is equal to a negative x plus 2y plus 6 divide everything by 2 and z is equal to negative 1 half x plus y plus 3 so to write this in function notation we are going to say f of x y is equal to negative 1 half x plus y plus 3 and then if i want to evaluate f of 0 comma 2 that's just going to be negative 1 half times 0 plus 2 plus 3, which is equal to 0 plus 2 plus 3 is 5. And that is function notation and solving for z when you have three variables. Now the last question in the notes today is about planning a vacation to a resort. 
And we have airfare that's going to be $1,200. Lodging is $120 per night. And family style meals are $40 each. Okay, so what you want to do here is you want to read this carefully and write a model for the total amount they're going to spend um, based on the number of nights and number of meals and stuff like that. So go ahead and pause and try it. Did you get the same thing I did? Well, basically what you're doing here is we're going to call the total cost of the trip Z. X is going to be for the number of nights we're staying at $100 or $120 each night. And then the meals are $40 for the entire family. And then it just says that the airfare is $1,200. It doesn't say per night or anything like that. Obviously, you wouldn't want to get charged for flights every night when you're not going anywhere. So let's just say that the total airfare for the entire trip is going to be $1,200 round trip. Okay, so now all you have to do is evaluate the model for several different amounts of nights and meals. So I'll do one of them with you, and then you can finish it. So we have the cost, which is going to be... Um, $120 per night um, so we're gonna say what if we stayed for one night and we had two meals so to do this for one night and two meals we would just do 120 times one plus $40 times two meals plus $1,200 and that's gonna be 120 plus 80 plus 1200 which is going to end up giving us a $1,500 trip if we go for one night and have two meals. So obviously you can see what you need to do to finish this table. Um, this one over here would be for two nights and five meals. This one over here is for three nights and ten meals. You go right ahead and figure out the rest of this matrix. Um, as soon as you're done, click play and you will find the final answer. Okay, so quick thing, this was supposed to be 1400 not 1500 And all you have to do now is just check your answers to see if it works. All you had to do is substitute like uh, 5 in for X and 10 in for Y here. Add 1200 for your flight. And that's it. So here's just a brief introduction to the three-dimensional world. So that's it for this video. This is Longo, and I'm out. Bye.